We happen to be in the very fortunate position to have just a random little car sitting in our driveway. So I think we're gonna turn him into an adventure rig. We're Nick and Aubrey, and up until the pandemic brought us home, we lived full time in a sprinter van and drove all the way to Argentina. Now, after saying goodbye to our beloved van, Morrison, we are ready to build out a new kind of vehicle, a Toyota Highlander, to take on adventures around our home state of Texas. This guy's is the Matney family Highlander. It is third generation now. <laughs> wow. It is a, basically an heirloom, I would say. <laughs> 2006 Highlander, my grandparents put about 200,000 miles on it, passed it to my dad who put another 150,000 miles on it, and this year we inherited it with 350,000 miles. It's sitting here at 365. Is that right, babe? Still going. And we're not going to be putting a whole lot of money into this for obvious reasons. Want to keep it under what, like $500? Keep it under $500, I think. Even with the jacked up price of lumber. So as you can see, we've already taken the front seats out. It was quite the process. Yeah. The first step was obviously to take out the front seat. We had no idea how much space that was going to give us or even really what was underneath. And before we could find out, we had to remove all the bolts holding the seats in. And of course, and this is always how things go with these old vehicles, one of the bolts was super duper rusted. But patience always wins out in the end. That and a whole can of WD-40. And we were able to get it out without having to drill oh. extra holes in the car. We didn't catch that fight on camera, but this <laughs> rusty ass screw, wow. whatever you call it, bolt, took about an hour to get out in a whole can of WD-40. Maybe that's the downside of working with these old vehicles, but I'm you know learning what? patience. Wow. Patience, patience, patience. Okay. And yeah. using hand tools instead of air compressed tools. <laughs> Woo! Wow. You're sounding like a downright old car guy. Downright old car guy, huh? Yeah. Old man. So you guys can see in this particular vehicle that we're working with, we have a lot of like random little bumps. So what we're just gonna simply do is try to just lay something to flatten and level it out and screw it in to the front here. With this next step, we wanted to accomplish two things. Level the bumps and ridges out and provide a way for the whole thing to secure to the car itself. So we came up with a pretty simple solution, a piece of plywood that would cover the whole thing with a smaller piece that could act as a leg to keep it level. How does she fit? All right. Looks pretty good. It's pretty good on my side. How's it look on your side? Great. And now we have a level surface to work with. Little surface to work with, isn't that right? All right, let's zip it. There was this metal ridge that the seats had been bolted into that was a safe place for us to secure this new floor using self tapping screws to the car. We just wanted to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Waggle. And um, these kids over here are helping us talk about this product because right. it's for our furry friends. This is Waggle. It is a temperature and humidity monitor that you put in your RV or vehicle so that you can monitor if it's too hot for one of these little guys to be in the car. As anyone who's lived in an RV or van knows, every once in a while you just have to leave the doggos behind mm -hmm. and it is not a good feeling and you never really feel 100% about it. Um, and the main reason is you just never want to put your dog in danger. So Waggle monitors the temperature that's inside your car, making sure that it is safe for your pup to be in there. It syncs up with an app on your phone so that you can be away from your doggo or cat. Some people right. have cats in their some RVs and do. vans. Yeah. And um, those cat people. Those cat people. No, seriously, some people have cats right. in their RVs or right. vans. And it's interesting to me as a non cat <laughs> Yeah, you're dishing on the cat people. <laughs> but you know what? Right. You need a temperature sensor for those. No guys matter too. the animal that you have. There's a lot of features to this thing. It can send you texts or email alerts of any RV power loss um, mm -hmm. and power back. So you know if like the AC in your RV is not working. Right. It can send you texts and email alerts when the temperature is too high or too low. It uses Verizon 4G cellular network. So it's already ready to go. Right. You don't have to like connect it to a Wi-Fi. It has a rechargeable battery, which mm -hmm. lasts up to four days which is awesome oh and it has gps tracking which i feel like if you right. ever parking your rv right, or van right, right. you know what i'm saying and you like forgot where you parked it right can help i feel like it. we're monitoring this is being presented as a pet monitor but it's really a tracker for your car and um a monitor of your power anyway so thank you to waggle we really appreciate their sponsorship go check them out if you have an rv if you have a dog guys holy if you have an RV or van and you got a little furry friend that you're traveling with, you can ah! pick up Waggle for yourself. 
um, and use our code MATNEYS50 for 50% off. A huge amount. Huge savings. That's right. Thank you, Agle. We appreciate you keeping all of our pets safe. Back to the video. Got the old Coleman grill. This little guy is going to be... You can picture it, can't you? I really can. ARB. This old boy, how many miles? This is a relic from our van. A relic from our van. Morrison lives on and his many guts, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then over here, this is going to be really satisfying. Whenever you're camping, what do you always want more of? Water. Fresh water, right? <laughs> so imagine this paint can was not paint. So we wouldn't want to be drinking paint. <laughs> but it was water. We're going to have a little pump out of the top. Mm, nice. Fill up the cups. You've got your... Shout out to Okmo for sending this power station. Look very legit, guys. Uh, we're gonna build this right in, so this it, you'll have a, basically a little what would you call this control panel? Like it, yeah. And uh, then you've got the room for our po portable solar Okmo solar panels on top of all Flash also all of our other gear. That was exactly. Oh, oh. Okay. Now it was time to start assembling the whole compartment. First up, we cut out pieces of three quarter inch plywood in sort of an L shape so that they would fit nicely onto the shape of the inside of the vehicle. Right, right. things are looking good so far. Mm -hmm. right. We cut some holes in the pieces to make the whole thing way less. Cutting holes in all these pieces because it doesn't reduce the strength of the plywood and it is way less weight easier to get around. This also allows us to ventilate everything better, you know? Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna have a fridge, so. We're gonna have a fridge in here. Compressor, battery. Have a little control panel. Oh, she's super light. Super right, light. looks good too. Yes, this cubby honestly is like killing two birds with one stone. It yeah. It's even lighter and Simplifies. you don't have to do a hinge or anything. Right, no. right, right. We worked together to cut all the rest of the pieces we needed to hold the whole thing together and put some pocket holes in them for assembly. We're about to make this shit 3D. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Alright, that part's looking good. Really good. Starting to come to a little bit of form. We got a fridge slot. The top is just gonna build right around that. And then this is going to be our big drawer. And I really like this touch Aubrey put in today. We've got a little control panel here. Woo, that, that battery. is nifty. That is really, really, really nice. So on this side, control panel, and then we're gonna cut in a spot for a five gallon water tank for our drinking water. And then finally on the other side, the cubby for the camping gear. Next step is going to be putting a back wall on here, kind of a divider middle wall on right here, and constructing the entire top. Now fortunately, we had quarter inch ply from a previous project already ready to go, and we had a big old sheet of half inch ply ready to go as well. Now would you look at that? The box is coming right together. So the next thing that we're working on is we want to have a little cutout here, kind of a cutout on the corner of it, on the edge, so that we can fit this bottle of water. This is gonna be our drinking water. We found this little spout pump thing that you can put on top of these. It fits really nice and snug. It was only like 15 bucks. And you can touch it. Very and fancy. This is some water. Pretty fancy. I do feel high tech just like touching stuff. Right. Getting it to work. No, it is cool. But as you guys know, there's going to be like a platform here. So we need to cut it out to where we can basically get this thing in and out really easily, but it also stays in place. And this guy has somewhere to go. Okay, so then we needed to cut some parts out of the topper for the whole thing. One for the fridge to poke out and one for the water. 
Try this out. Okay, needs to be able to go in and out without much trouble. In and out. And especially with the top how it is, we can even reach our hands in and grab it. That mm -hmm. is sick. Nice job. Looking good. Boom. We just used some glue and nails to attach to the top. and then flipped it over to throw some pocket hole screws in to keep it extra secure. Okay, this is such a random like infomercial product that we actually really love and it's Flex Seal. I mean, the memes are good and the product is even better. We love to use it as a weatherproofing coat to protect the wood and it seals up all the nooks and crannies so that we can keep everything nice and protected. So I threw a whole coat of flex seal around the inside of every compartment. Thanks for protecting us, Dash. Dash. Thanks, Mr. Dash. As for the outside, we wanted something that looked a little fresher. So we found this rubber diamond plate to glue all around the outside. To glue it, we used Gorilla Glue heavy duty construction adhesive and then used an X-Acto knife to carefully trim all the edges so they perfectly match the shape of the compartment. This looks awesome. It looks so cool. I'm going to give it a little 360. Clean, really clean, good. clean. We've got siding coming soon. Yeah, this will but also clean. have... Clean. This uh, rubber diamond plate, but this just makes it look like way more industrial and cool. Babe, it's thing. got a naked butt. I know, it really does. Don't look. We have um, some kind of corner trim here that's going to be coming in the next day or so, so we haven't put that on yet. So it'll be finished off nice and pretty. Okay, the last big part of this project is what we're calling the kitchen drawer. We wanted this drawer to have three main functions. A sink to wash dishes, a stove to cook, and plenty of storage space for dishes. This is gonna be our sink, which is basically, it flattens like this, but then it just pops out. You pops out even it. more. And it pops out. Give us a full pot, please. Pop yeah. it, baby. Um, this, all these products that we use, by the way, a lot of people on Instagram already are like, where is this? these certain things and so all the links will be in the description box below this is really cool it's like a pop-out sink and then it has like a little drain here but I think you just push it and it helps you drain it so anyways I'm going to trace this out because this is going to be our sink drawer that's going to slide out from underneath underneath the stove I think. a drawer within a drawer y'all some magic just happened this is what happens when you dig in your garage we got some scraps. This is like a little laminate countertop scrap. So we have a couple different like counter spaces that we wanted to have some kind of thing other than just like wood, right? you know? And so... We've been able to use that. That pile of scraps right there was about twice as big before this. That's and it's awesome. going down That's quickly. Really good After we cut the countertop, we cut the hole for the sink and tested it out. And we just go a little... Yeah, that's awesome. Pop that's out. That's freaking awesome. That's cool. Nice, 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 nice. We use the same heavy duty construction adhesive to glue the laminate countertop onto the sink drawer, clamped it down, and then cut the same shape hole into the laminate. This is where the stove is going to sit. And then underneath here, you can see there's a little compartment. This is the drawer for the sink like we showed you guys already. The sink needed to go on drawer slides to slide out of the larger drawer. This way we could save on space and have some extra countertops to work with. So Nick made the structure for the sink to go on top of that so it could attach to the drawer slides. Let's see the stove well, on here. It's not too long. 
Nope, it's perfect. Next, it was time to start on the larger drawer itself. We had already added a backing to close the stove slash sink area of the drawer, so we added a backing to the entire thing, making some space for the kitchen storage. We got this drawer pretty much almost in its final state. Almost, well, it's definitely getting ready to go. It's really getting ready to Functionally, go. Functionally, it's, it's rocking. There's gonna be a little countertop, I'm gonna show this off, countertop that sits on top of these, um, I guess gas they're gas struts. So we're gonna test this guy out, make sure that it fits. Moment of truth. The specific heavy duty drawer slides we used couldn't come apart, so we had to install them with the drawer attached, which was pretty tricky to figure out. We ended up attaching it upside down, and then it was time to put it inside the car. All right, it's a little bit dark, right. but we're gonna show you guys the fruit of our labor. Right. In the next video, we'll give you like a whole last tour and we'll like be using it and everything. First of all, we got a fridge we right got here. Our ARB fridge for cool all little fridge our food. Big old kitchen drawer. So our stove sits nice right here. And we have our sink that can pop down, a little bit more counter space. Pop it down for us, babe. Look at that. Beautiful. Very, very cool. This right here is a little compartment for extra food storage and like pots and pans and dishes and stuff like that. And we'll still have extra counter space here. That's key. Over on this side, we have our drinking water with this fancy ass pump we've already showed you guys. I'm obsessed with how this is all looking with the rubber diamond plate. You know, it, it looks, looks awesome. So, so slick. And then we have this battery. You probably can barely see it because it matches so well. We really got a good black theme going on in right, this guy. Right, right, it's true. And last but not least, this is our storage cubby where we're going to be keeping all of our camping gear, tent, sleeping bags, moon shade, all that good stuff. And I think we have basically all that we need to go on a camping trip. Pick up and go. Pick up and go. Oh, I'm so excited. It's looking really cool with you uh, standing there Am with I that whole thing cool? pulled out. Yeah. Ooh, Feeling nice. ready to cook? I'm feeling so ready to camp, dude, let's go. Next video, and I'm so excited because this video is gonna give us an excuse to like go camping tomorrow. Like, right. we are off to the races. Right. I'm so stoked, and we're gonna give you guys a whole ass tour of this thing. We're probably, we have a few things we need to add, like random, you know, kitchen water and like things like that. Um, we're gonna have all of our stuff in here and that kind of thing, so we'll show you guys how it all works in the next one. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next